Yo, what's up guys, it's NLW here, back again with another video. Today, we are talking about All Elite Wrestling. Is it still good? Short answer, yes. Long answer though, it's all subjective really. It's not to everyone's taste and that's fine because what we're going to do, we're going to sit down and let's talk wrestling. The last video I did about NXT did pretty well and sparked a debate, so I'm hoping that the same can be said for this video. But before I get into All Elite Wrestling, like the video if you enjoy these kinds of videos where I talk about wrestling and comment below what are your thoughts on AEW? Do you watch it? Do you not watch it? And why? And make sure you subscribe as we're trying to reach 1,000 subscribers soon on this channel and your support would be greatly appreciated. But without further ado, let's get into it. And as with all of these videos where I talk wrestling, let's start off with the positives about All Elite Wrestling. For the first time in a long time, a wrestling company has me excited to watch their weekly product. I catch Dynamite every week. It's my favorite part of the week. I just sit down and I can enjoy it. A lot of times I watch wrestling and it seems like a chore. Not necessarily a chore, but it's more like a big event, I guess. I have to watch it. But with AEW, it's more like a television series that I'm looking forward to watching rather than a wrestling series, if that makes sense. And as a fan, compelling television is very entertaining to watch. And perhaps that's why it makes it new and different. Different doesn't always mean good, but I feel like for the most part, AEW delivers. Whereas with NXT, I perhaps appreciate the match quality, but I don't necessarily care about the characters. But with AEW, the wrestling may not always be on point. However, I'm very much invested in the characters they have. For instance, your Darby Allens, your Jungle Boys, your John Moxley's. That moves me on to my second point. They have likeable baby faces and detestable heels. You have the underdog in Darby Allen, as I said, a daredevil who'll put his body on the line. You've also got the main eventers like John Moxley, a headstrong fighter who is a solid champion. And on the flip side, you've got good heels such as Chris Jericho, of course. He does do goofy things and it's easy to want to cheer him at times, but on the whole, a good heel. And also, obviously, MJF, the best heel in the business. Business. His promo skills are fantastic and he's a joy to watch and you really want to hate him But not in the turn the channel kind of way like Baron Corbin would make you want to do and with all of these intertwining characters There's a common theme that you're invested in the storylines at least I am personally you may disagree But one of the critiques of AEW perhaps the too heavy reliance on long-term storytelling For instance, I remember people were very unhappy that Kenny Omega and Hangman Page didn't have that big blow-off heel turn I feel like it could have happened or maybe should have happened by now and I agree to an extent but I may be very naive by saying that they're holding it out for further down the line. I'm sure there's going to be another match between Omega and the Hangman so they reward you for having patience with the product is what I'm trying to say. And I feel like Hangman could be the one to take Omega's title, but again, could be naive. And they have other compelling stories, such as Cody and MGF's feud from earlier last year. The whipping was one of the most emotional segments throughout wrestling at the time, and all the hoops that Cody had to go through to get to MGF. It's classic storytelling 101. The babyface tries to get ahead of the heel, but MGF making it very difficult for him. And in the end, it put over MGF. He's the young star and the future of the business. And let's talk about that. The youth of the roster. You've got a young crop of talent. You've got people in their 20s like Jungle Boy. Top flight, they're younger than me. Guys like Darby Allen. And as I said, MGF, he's only 24, 25. A very young group of talent. Contrast that to WWE's older group of wrestlers in their late 30s and early 40s. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but you can see clearly that AEW is building towards the future and that makes you more invested perhaps in seeing the journeys of the wrestlers as they progress throughout this company and one of the advantages that this company has is they have a very young company so they're going to make mistakes naturally and you shouldn't just give them a free pass because they're new or they're not WWE but it's more understandable that as a brand they're still trying to find their feet what works and what doesn't case in point any bad storyline that there's been they'll drop it they'll tweak it and you don't have the same sense of dread. There's a kind of trust that you have that the story will sort itself out. And again, that could be wishful thinking on my part. But for the most part, stories seem to play out well, despite obvious exceptions, which I'll get to. But what about the matches themselves? Well, I love the diverse styles that you see on Dynamite on a weekly basis. You've got hardcore matches, high-flying matches, technical-based matches, comedy, good storyline matches. There's a bunch of different styles on the roster, and you can tell that each character has their own unique personality and persona, which shines through. A lot of the time you're watching WWE and the scripted nature of the promos makes every wrestler sound the same. In AEW, I like that they have unscripted promos. They can be themselves. That makes MJF completely different to an Orange Cassidy, for instance. And you've got Moxley as well, great on the mic. Jericho too. There's a lot and a sense of authenticity, I would say, that you don't get with WWE, where they script it word for word. 
AEW as well, they play to the strengths of the wrestlers, which is something that ECW used to do quite a lot back in the day. You'd hide the weaknesses and then you show off their strengths. And I think, again, I'm going on to another point, but the production quality makes it... Yeah, it was a bit rocky at the start, I'm not going to lie, but I feel like it gives you that kind of sense of sports presentation, which I'm really digging. And just minor things like the camera shot style, where it's not shaking all the time, it's a welcome change. And the backstage vignettes, treating the cameraman as a real person and not just an invisible wall. Again, that sense of authenticity, like you're watching a real life thing on unfold. Obviously, there's goofy things that are completely out of control, like I think Matt Hardy's teleportation, that was a bit over the line. But still, it's hit and miss sometimes, but when it does hit, it lands perfectly. And finally, I will say that this really only applies this point to the first few months of Dynamite because obviously we're in a pandemic now, so there's no crowd or at least there's less of a crowd, so it's not as noticeable. But those first few Dynamites, man, those were fantastic. And that was mostly driven by the audience, just the sheer hype. When you turn on Dynamite, it's a cold open. There's four teams in the ring and the crowd just lights up and they're cheering everything. I watched Young Bucks versus Private Party from an early Dynamite and it's absolutely fantastic. The crowd's reaction really makes the match and just as a viewer gets you hyped for the action as well. So I will say maybe they didn't acclimatize immediately to not having a crowd. There did take a bit of a dip in terms of quality around the summer, but the product has been a lot better recently. Jeez, they announced a bloody barbed wire death match at the next pay-per-view and I'm very much looking forward to it. So they're finding their feet again now, which I think is good. And maybe the hype has died down a little bit. So there's a bit of criticism for that. And again, some of the angles, which hopefully are being dropped sooner rather than later, like Cody and Shaq, you know, that don't pique my interest in the Young Bucks characters. Seem to be all over the place at the moment. I don't know what they want. And since I've gushed about AEW, and if you're not a fan, you might be uh, a little bit annoyed by this part of the video, but don't worry, I'll get onto my criticisms right now. And the biggest one has to be the women's division. When AEW was first set up, they hyped the hell out of the women's division. And it's kind of floundered a little bit. At Double or Nothing, you had six great Joshi wrestlers competing in a six-woman tag. You know, there was a great building block there. An opportunity to sign a lot of unsigned indie talent that they didn't take full advantage of, and not to mention pointless squash matches, the champion not being on TV or featured in any segments, and a lot of this is down to the pandemic, I understand, not being able to get the women in from Japan and other places, and maybe some of them aren't as experienced as they are in NXT or WWE, but you've got to give them a shot, and I don't think they were given a fair go of it. Right now, they seem to be on the right track. Riho just returned to Dynamite. Thunder Rosa as well is fantastic. And they've got the block in Japan where they're having matches to see who's going to face Shida at Revolution, which I'm enjoying at the moment. The Josie matches, I've got to give a thumbs up to. And perhaps that's been the biggest letdown of AEW so far. Hopefully, it gets better. We can't have them floundering as they were before. More meaningful segments are needed. Not with Brandy Rhodes, but <laughs> maybe more interesting characters is what I'm trying to say. And another thing which I think needs work is to shake that indie feeling from the show. It's a massive turnoff for a lot of fans, not myself included, but I can certainly see where they're coming from. A lot of the times they do nail humour and it works on a small scale, but far too often it falls flat on its face on perhaps a mainstream level, at least in my view. There's room for goofy comedy stuff. I think Orange Cassidy's great. I like the Hangman page segments. They're really funny. The Dark Order too. But some of the stuff like Britt Baker's segments, we've got Reba and some of the comedy matches that, you know, sometimes I'll get a kick out of, but most of them, there's a lot of in-jokes that I wouldn't understand. You have to be watching Being the Elite and all these different things. So I only watch Dynamite, so I don't know what's going on in all these different promotions or whatever. So some of that stuff, will go over my head. But again, the vast majority of people who are watching Dynamite aren't watching all these external things. So that's the overarching point. You need to make the product more accessible for casual fans. For instance, last year, they debuted a few new people like The Butcher and The Blade, an infamous debut for all the wrong reasons. I didn't know who they were, but they looked cool. And if you have given them, what, two or three vignettes leading up to the Dynamite that they debuted at, then people might have been a little bit more hyped. But instead, you're expected to know who these people are out the gate, and you can't expect everyone to just do their homework. For themselves, you have to give the fans a reason to care. Again, I go back to my earlier point, Darby Allen versus Joey Janela. I know that that's an important match, and it was a very good match, and I was excited for it, but within AEW, why is there a reason that they're fighting? You can't just talk about their past and say, well, here you go. You've got to give people a reason, you know, and the rankings as well. Another thing which I feel they failed to deliver on, sometimes the number four shot tag team will get a shot of the titles, and it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It only really applies when it suits them. But if I could sum up the video, is AEW any good? And I would say, yes, it is. I think objectively and subjectively it is. The promos are fantastic. The storylines are very engaging for the most part. They may have lost their way a little bit over the past year, but naturally everyone's acclimatizing to the pandemic. It's a difficult situation to be in with crowds not there. I would have interested to see how crowds would have helped the show 
throughout the summer of 2020, but that's, again, the power of hindsight. I, as a fan, all I'm looking for, I can look over certain inconsistencies, but what I want to be is entertained. And the character issues sometimes, I, it doesn't matter to me because the show is fun to watch and I have a good time watching it. So for every match that doesn't quite click, for every storyline that doesn't quite go well, there's another one that will have you reminding yourself why well, you became a wrestling fan. The Cody and MJF stuff, as I mentioned. Kenny Omega and his fantastic matches on a week-to-week -week basis. The Lucha Brothers, just absolutely fantastic tag team wrestling across the whole company. And seeing these young guys like Darby Allen, Jungle Boy, their first real exposure on a national level, these young stars who will be big stars in the next 10, 20 years. You've got an investment watching these characters interact with each other and you're invested in them as characters on the show. And I like my character-based wrestling. Again, that's why the Attitude Era worked so well. You had such unique and strong characters and I think AEW is on the way to being that kind of brand. Yes, yeah, some of the matches could be more realistic. I don't like some of the indie-rific spots with the dives to the outside and all of that. And at times, lack of safety, maybe tone down the comedy too and the goofiness a little bit. But ultimately, Dynamite is fun and AEW is a fun show to watch. And I thought I had a bias, so I actually went out and looked for some criticisms that people have of AEW. Some of them are very valid and I can understand them, but a lot of it is very, very toxic, the discourse. And I'll say that too for the AEW fan side of things. They will defend their brand so vigorously Vigorously. And it's like, it's just a show at the end of the day. And all of these people that you're complaining about, they're all friends. Like, there's no hard feelings there. All I'll say is, Wednesday night is a fantastic night for wrestling as a whole, whether that be NXT or AEW. There needs to be less toxicity around ratings and things like that. I like my serious wrestling. And you know what? I like my Outlaw Mud Show wrestling too. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. There just needs to be less toxicity about it, in my view. And you know what? If Dynamite's not to your taste, that's cool because now the beauty of wrestling in 2021 is there's wrestling products out there for everyone. Different styles to suit different people and I love it. So I hope I've made my point well. I just wanted to sit down and talk about wrestling again. The NXT video I enjoyed doing and I thought I'd do one for AEW to level the playing field. I enjoyed this a lot but let me know in the comments what other wrestling companies or shows you want me to review or talk about. I'd be interested to watch an episode of Impact for instance, give you my thoughts on it or any other show out there like Ring of Honor. Like the video if you enjoyed this sort of thing. Comment down below what you think about AEW Dynamite. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? I enjoy talking about AEW and NXT on the last one, so it's good to get a couple comments going. If you disagree with me, I want to know why. I'm very open to hearing it. Subscribe for more figure-related content too, as we're going to try and hit 1,000 subscribers soon, and if you could help me get there, it would be greatly appreciated. That's it from me. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys later.